This is the fourth section of chapter three on representations of data. And this section is about histograms. So the first thing with a histogram is that the area of a bar in a histogram is proportional to the frequency that that bar represents. So we can write that as this area of bar is proportional to frequency. And then we can write it as area of bar equals a constant K times by the frequency. Now, if the value of K happens to be one, then the frequency density F, the frequency density is equal to the frequency divided by the class width. And lastly, if we join the top and the middle of each bar in the histogram, we will get a frequency polygon. Example five, a random sample of 200 students was asked how long it took them to complete their homework the previous night. The time was recorded and summarized in this table below here. And what we need to do in part A is to draw a histogram to represent the data. So the first thing we need to do is to work out the frequency density for each bar, effectively the height of each bar. So we'll start with the first bar here. So the first bar has a frequency of 55 and a width of five. So we just do 55 divided by five. So the first bar is gonna have a height of 11. Second bar that has a frequency of 39. That also has a width of five. That gives us 7.8. Third bar that has a frequency of 68, also a width of five. So its frequency density is 13.6. The fourth bar um, that has a frequency of 32 and a width of 10. So that has a high a frequency density of 3.2. And the fifth bar, the last bar, has a frequency of six and a width of 30. So that has a frequency density or a height of 0.2. So now we'll draw our axis. So we've got our frequency density going up the side. We want to go up to 11, so go up to 12 there. And we've got our times going along the bottom between 25 and 80 along here. So now I'm going to draw in the bars. Okay, so there's my completed histogram. I realized actually I needed to go up to 13.6. So I just added a little bit more at the top here to get that bar in. Now we're going to part B, and part B is asking us to estimate how many students took between 36 and 45 minutes to complete their homework. So the first thing we're going to do is going to try and shade which parts of the bars those represent. Okay, so we're talking about this part of this bar and this part of this bar. So all we need to do is to work out the width and the height of those, multiply them together, and we've got our frequency. It's just about finding the area of those two rectangles there. Right, so let's do that. So let's start with this one here and work out that width. So this part here is going from 36 to 40. So its width is 40 minus 36 times by its height. And that height is here, 13.6. So that gives a frequency of 54.4. We'll do the same with this bar here and work out its width. So this part of the bar here is going from 40 to 45. So its width is 45 minus 40, which is five times by its height. And this is the bar that's got a height of 3.2. 3.2 or 3.5. So that's a frequency of 16. So if we want to estimate, we need to do 54.4 plus 16. And that gives me 70.4. And what does a 74.4 uh, stand for? The number of students of so 70.4 students.
Example 6. A random sample of daily mean temperatures was taken from the large data set for Hearn in 2015. The temperatures were summarized in a grouped frequency table and represented by histogram. Part A, we need to give a reason to support the use of a histogram to represent this data. Now, uh, we have bars in histograms. Why do we have bars in histograms? Because our data is grouped. And since we've got grouped data, that's um, uh, a histogram is a very useful way to represent group data. It's continuous data as well. You can also represent discrete data on a histogram, but continuous group data can be uh, represented well on a histogram because each bar represents a group. Okay, so let's move on to part B. Write down the underlying feature associated with each of the bars in a histogram. So the underlying feature is that each bar or the area of each bar is proportional to the frequency area of each bar is proportional to its frequency. Okay, let's move on to part C. So before we get to part C, it says on the histogram, the rectangle representing the temperature 16 to 18 uh, was 3.2 centimeters high and two centimeters wide. The frequency for this class was eight. Show that each date is represented by an area of 0.8 centimeters squared. Okay, so let's work out the area of this bar. So that's going to be 3.2 times by 2. So we get 6.4 centimeters squared. Now that represents a frequency of 8, which is 8 days. So what's the area needed for one day? Well, we're just going to do 6.4 centimeters squared divided by 8. And we get 0.8 centimeters squared as required so we've just shown that that statement is true and lastly we move on to part d part d says given that the total area under the histogram is 48 centimeters squared find the total number of days in the sample so all we need to do here is to take the total area which is 48 divide it by how much area is required for each day and that will tell us the number of days. So 48 divided by 0 0.8 is 60. So the total number of days in the sample was 60 days. So you should now be able to do exercise 3D on pages 50 to 52 of the textbook.